Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. Um, we are continuing our series on uh, the completion and the perfection of the religion and the way of the companions or the Sahaba of the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, um, last week we did a live broadcast and we talked about the completion and the perfection of the religion. Now, God willing, inshallah, we will continue on the same series where we will talk about the obligation to follow the companions. And in the book of Allah, which is the Holy Quran, and in the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, there are numerous evidences in which scholars, they utilize this as proof. Proof for the obligation to remain steadfast upon that which the companions, they were on themselves. And this evidence they utilize for the Muslim community or the Ummah to not deviate from this. What are some of these texts? Well, in chapter 4, verse 115 of the Holy Quran, which the Holy Quran is the, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Holy Quran is memorized by millions of Muslims. So if you utter something, if you say something that's not correct, there are millions of Muslims that will correct you on the subject of the Holy Quran. So in chapter 4, verse 115, it says, and whoever contradicts, contradicts, and opposes the messenger after the right path has been shown clearly to him and follows other than the believer's way, we shall keep him on that path he has chosen and burn him in hell. What an evil destination. One of the great scholars, Imam al-Shafi'i, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him, he explained in the above verse that I just mentioned, chapter 4, verse 115, that this is undeniable, unmistakable truth and proof to follow the consensus of the companions or the Sahaba of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in addition to mentioning contradiction, also mentioned opposition to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In this verse is added and follows a path other than the path of the believer's way. And this way is explained in another verse, in other hadith or ahadith, ahadith being plural of hadith, of hadith, as being that which the companions they were on, they were on the truth, they were on the straight path. Their understanding and their knowledge, and most importantly, their implementation of the religion of Islam was pure, straight, unfiltered, and correct. Also in chapter nine, verse 100 of the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and the first 
to embrace Islam of the Mujaharun or those who migrated from Mecca to Al Madina and the Ansar, who the citizens of Medina at that time, who helped and who gave aid to the first to embrace Islam, and also those who followed them exactly in faith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is well pleased with them as they are well pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has prepared for them gardens under which rivers flow, i.e. paradise. Prepared gardens under which rivers flow to dwell therein forever. That is the su supreme success. So in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned those who followed the first to embrace Islam. And the Ansar. In faith, what does this mean? Which follows them in Iman, and the deen of Islam. <clears throat> and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and those who came after them say, our Lord, forgive us our brethren who have preceded us in faith and put not in our hearts any hatred against those who have believed. O Lord, you are indeed of kindness and most merciful. Chapter 59, verse 10 in the Holy Quran. So those people that are being referred to are the companions who preceded the whole ummah in faith or in iman, which is the Islamic aqidah and what follows on on it in the form of speech and most importantly in action and these verses is a type of praise for those who come after the companions they recognize the virtue of the companions and the precedent that they set in the Islamic faith. This is why supplications are made to them. And they do not harbor any hatred or anything towards the companions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared a garden under which rivers will flow. How can you be upset or harbor any hatred towards the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised this garden to? So it is an obligation. It is a duty by the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to follow the companions in their iman in their faith, in the way that they practiced Islam, in their actions, their speech. They were the, 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 the first ones to embrace this and they took it from, directly from the Prophet Sallallahu They know how the deen, they knew how Islam was supposed to be practiced. Their aqidah was pure. Their tawheed was pure. Just some examples from the sunnah. The Prophet wasallam said, the best of people is my generation. 
Then those that follow them. Then those that follow them. There's a hadith by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he talks about the best of this ummah or this nation is the generation to which I have been sent. Then those who come after the generation that I have been sent to. Then those who come after and after. But then there will come a people whose witness precedes their oaths and then their oaths precedes their witness. And also the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and my ummah was split into 73 sects. All of them in the fire except for one. They asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, some of the companions, they, they asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they asked him, who is the one that will not be in the, in the, in the hell fire? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied, that which I am on and my companions are upon today. So to follow the Quran and to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to follow the companions. Because they followed the Quran, they followed the Sunnah. They will live in the Sunnah. In another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he drew a line in the sand. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, this is the path of Allah. Then he drew lines to the right and drew lines to the left. And then the Prophet said, these are different ways upon each of these is a devil or shaitan calling to it. Then the prophet, he recited a verse from the Holy Quran. And it says, and verily, this is my straight path. So follow it and follow not the other paths for they will separate you away from his path. Stay upon the rope. Grab tight. Hold on to it. Stay firm on your akhida. Stay firm on your tawheed. In reference to the hadith, where the Prophet وسلم, drew a line in the sand. This hadith proves and it shows that the companions were the ones who were not on any other path except the same path that the Prophet وسلم, was on. The path that was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the companions were on the same one. And they did not deviate from that path. They were the ones with the sound Akhidah. They were the ones with the sound Tawheed. Next to the Prophets, next to the messengers that were sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the companions were on the same tawheed. 
to worship God and God alone and to not associate any partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship, ibadah, in anything that you do. You single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah alone. The companions safeguarded the deen. They built, they helped build the foundation on a solid, firm, steady ground. They built the Akhida of the Ummah, of the nation, solid. And at that time, the companions were united. They were strong. They were one. There were no divisions. They were taking the deen directly from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Divisions, sex, all that arose after. Insha'Allah, God willing, we as a nation return back to what the companions, what the Ansar, what the first ones to embrace Islam, what they were on, the Akhida they possessed, the Iman they possessed. As always, we like to leave you in the safety, in the mercy, and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying, Fi Amanullah.